Hello, and welcome again as we gather together for this time of worship on this third Sunday after Pentecost. Let me remind you again that we will continue these weekly recorded messages, even as again today, many of us will gather together for our drive-in worship at the parking lot of the church at 9.30 a.m. As we begin this worship, I, uh, as is our custom, I encourage you to have bread and wine or grape juice prepared uh, for our celebration of Holy Communion and uh, to light a candle as uh, a symbol of the Spirit's presence, presence with us in this time of word and sacrament. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And I heard you say, and also with you, thank you. Our gospel reading for today comes from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount uh, in Matthew's Gospel, the fifth chapter. And these words, Jesus says, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun to shine on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your Heavenly Father is perfect. Today, um, in part three of our series on the Lord's Prayer, we will be looking specifically at the fourth and fifth petitions. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And so today we're going to wrestle a little bit uh, with the question of what uh, does this mean uh, when we pray for our daily bread, and what does this mean when we pray for this difficult thing called forgiveness. Now, this difficult thing of forgiveness, uh, when in today's Gospel reading, Jesus says that we are to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. And when Jesus makes uh, this prayer of forgiveness connected to our forgiveness, uh, to those who sin against us. Martin Luther, in his small catechism, would um, summarize these two petitions uh, in two important words. For the petition regarding daily bread, Luther says we ought to concentrate on thanksgiving. And in regards to the petition on forgiveness, we ought to concentrate on God's grace. Both words cause us to turn our attention not to ourselves, uh, but to where God meets us uh, in these prayers. Uh, God meets us. We encounter God as we pray in an awareness of both thanksgiving and God's grace. Now, there's no doubt that thanksgiving and God's grace are important to us as human beings. Uh, and that's been uh, powerfully affirmed to us uh, by those who uh, are coming to the end of life, uh, to those who are in the active process of dying as in hospice. Uh, hospice care has come to gain the wisdom 
uh, this core wisdom from those who are dying. And I've shared this with you before, but those most important things can be uh, summarized in four things that matter most to those who are dying. And here they are as follows. Please forgive me. I forgive you. Thank you. I love you. These four things, please forgive me, I forgive you, thank you, I love you. Here too, these could all be summarized in those big words of thanksgiving and forgiveness, or we might say forgiveness as another word uh, for God's grace. So again, uh, to be clear, the fourth and fifth uh, petitions are all about thanksgiving and grace. Uh, thanksgiving and grace, which is also uh, known as unmerited goodness. And uh, certainly that's required in order to offer forgiveness. Uh, thanksgiving, uh, um, this means that what matters most uh, is that Thanksgiving we, we need uh, in this life uh, to be reminded uh, that all that we have, all that's necessary uh, for life uh, comes to us from our Creator God. Give us today our daily bread. And that Jesus says again in our Gospel reading today that, that God's grace, God's unmerited goodness towards us also uh, extends to those who don't recognize it, even to the unrighteous, even to the wicked. Jesus says, your heavenly Father makes the sun to rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. Without discretion, out of grace, God provides for the need of all of God's creation. Our dilemma in dealing with that and understanding that, of course, uh, is clouded because of the reality of human sin. The real problem in our world is not uh, that God doesn't provide but it's a matter of uh, that we, uh, as uh, people in this world, uh, find it difficult uh, to distribute equitably the gifts that God makes available. We still have a problem in this world uh, between the haves and the have-nots. But it's still to recognize that um, all that is provided for us, all the gifts of creation, are made possible uh, because of the grace and giving of our Creator, provision that God makes for us. To which Luther says, when we pray, give us today our daily bread, we ought to recognize and acknowledge that all that we have comes indeed from God. That's the beginning. Uh, and daily bread is not just bread. It's not just food. Uh, but daily bread is everything that's uh, necessary. Everything that's necessary for our bodies, our physical needs, our emotional needs, our mental health, all of these things make up uh, what is our daily bread. And we ought to receive all of these things with thanksgiving. Because God's gracious giving, God's gracious generosity, uh, that's the very nature of God, who is our Father. Uh, last week I mentioned that the uh, first three petitions of the Lord's Prayer uh, have to do with our prayer uh, simply for God to be God, for God to be God in our lives. 
that God's name uh, might be revealed uh, uh, as goodness through us. That God's kingdom might come and be revealed to the world even through us. That God's will might be done in and through us for the sake of this world that God so loves. And now in contrast, the fourth and the fifth petitions uh, turn that prayer towards uh, things that we pray for God to bestow upon us. Uh, and we pray that uh, we might become more like our Heavenly Father, that we might mirror the character of the God who provides all that we need. That we might become, as Jesus says in our Gospel reading today, that we might become more perfect. Um, that um, we might understand um, that generosity of God. And that we might become a people who mirror that generosity of God. And that we might be uh, forgiving of others as we believe that in Christ we have received God's grace and forgiveness, unmerited, freely given, out of love. Generosity and forgiveness are uh, tall orders in our world today. Uh, which gives so much uh, evidence of hate and prejudice and selfishness. And so at the very least, as we pray the Lord's Prayer, we pray that we might not be adding to the problem. We pray that we might come to appreciate more fully the depth of God's grace towards us. We pray that we might seek the Holy Spirit's transformation in our lives so that where we are blind uh, to those ways in which our lives perpetuate uh, selfishness and hate and injustice, that God might help us to see. And that where we are still enslaved to our own insecurities and wants, the community of God's people might help us to learn a new way of living. As we continue to learn how to pray the Lord's Prayer, as we ask the Holy Spirit uh, to give us a spirit of thanksgiving and generosity, uh, we ask that the Holy Spirit teach us uh, more fully this grace of forgiveness. So that in the Holy Spirit, uh, with the Holy Spirit, we might pray more authentically. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. In Jesus' name, amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Group hug. In the night in which he is betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. And let us pray together now as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.